and welcome to Woe Aid. My name is Jordan Richardson, and today I will be helping you understand how to find the volume of a solid using the disc and washer methods. So, you've been given a problem that looks a bit like this. You have f of x, and you have to rotate it around the x-axis, or maybe even the y-axis, and that creates a solid, and then you have to find the volume of that solid using the disc or washer method. If you're anything like I was when I was introduced to this concept, your immediate reaction would have been, what? Yeah, it's a bit confusing when you put it all together like that. So I'm here to break it down for you and help you understand what it is we're really doing and how this method even works. And then next week we'll apply what we've learned to some examples. Let's go back a little bit to when we are first finding the volume of a three-dimensional object. Let's take a rectangular prism. If we were to take some rectangular prism and I were to tell you that it was 5 inches by 3 inches by 2 inches, most of you could tell me that that rectangular prism has a volume of 30 inches cubed. With an object like, say, a water bottle, however, it's not that simple. That's where f of x comes in. We can represent the edge of this water bottle with an equation, f of x. And then if we were to take that equation and wrap it around the x-axis, we would get a solid that looked just like this water bottle. Using this information, we can now find the volume of the water bottle. It's that easy! Now you can do this with a variety of methods. The first one we'll talk about is the disc method. Imagine now that I could cut extremely thin slices of this water bottle. If I did, then I would be left with a ton of two-dimensional circles, or discs. The circles would vary in size based on where they are on the water bottle. So a circle right here on the end of the water bottle will be smaller than a circle found, say, here, because the diameter is larger. Now, if I found the area of each of these circles, or discs, and put it all together, I'd then have the volume of the water bottle. The only problem is, that would take an incredibly long time to do by hand. Thus, we have integrals. So, we want to come up with some equation to find the area of each of these disks. As a reminder, the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Now, we already know what pi is. It's the same for all of our disks. But what's the radius? We can't go measuring every single disk individually. Again, that's going to take way too long. There's an infinite amount of them. Imagine sitting there doing your math test and having to find the radius of an infinite amount of disks. Doesn't sound like my kind of party, but think of it this way. If we have our water bottle, and the edge of the water bottle is f of x, and the x-axis goes through the middle of the water bottle, then we can determine that the radius of each disk is that y point, or f of x. So in general, we can say that f of x is the radius. So, if the radius of each of these disks is f of x, or the y-coordinate at that location, we can now use this information to make our formula. The area of each of these circles is equivalent to pi times f of x squared. So now we get to the calculus, the integral. In order to find the volume of the solid formed by all of these disks, we must now take the integral of pi times f of x squared from point A, the tip of the water bottle, to point B, the other end of the water bottle. Once you solve the integral, you now have the volume of your solid. It's amazing! But next, we have the washer method, which is actually very similar to the disk method. Taking what we already learned from the disk method about radius and the x-axis and how you find the volume of a solid, we now will pretend that we have a covering over our water bottle, almost like a blanket, and we're trying to find the volume of just the blanket. Now we might have a new equation, g of x, which represents the edge of this blanket that we have around our water bottle. But if we found the integral of pi times g of x squared dx from point A to point B, then that would give us the blanket and the water bottle's volume. So the washer method is a way to kind of get rid of that extra information, because we don't want the volume of the water bottle. So, imaginary student in the camera, if we have a lot of things and we want to take out a part of it, what would we do? Subtract it! That's right! So the washer method, in essence, is just the disk method subtracted from another larger disk method. So we would find the integral from point A to point B of g of x, minus the integral from point A to point B of f of x, and then that would give us just the volume of g of x, with that little hole in the middle, like a donut. Um, 
Thank you for joining me this week on Woe well Aid, and I hope you've been able to understand the disk and washer method a bit more. Next week, we will be doing some examples that will help apply what we've learned this week. Remember, if you have any questions, whether they be about this lesson or a potential future lesson, feel free to email them at woeaid at gmail.com or put them in the comments below. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Happy learning!